Okay. Um, I would like to call the meeting to order of the Cultural Arts and Public Spaces Committee for the Town of Superior. And Dean, I think you're going to do roll call. <laughs> oh, Dean is still on mute. Can you hear oh. me? I'm doing my instructions before um, we do roll call. Okay, got it. So um, here are the instructions, everybody. Um, you guys are all panelists, is what it's called. And those people in the public that might join us are called attendees. So panelists are allowed to um, speak and be part of the meeting at any time. And attendees are only allowed to speak during public comment period. So um, what I'm gonna do now is just give you guys some instructions on how to see each other um, in the uh, participant view. So everybody at the bottom of your screen, um, you'll see a list of menu options. The first um, one is obviously mute. That's where you can mute yourself on the bottom left. Then you can stop your video if you need to. So if you're gonna um, need to take a break or walk away, mute yourself and stop your video. And then next is participants. So everyone click on participants so you can see everybody who's joined on the, on the right side in a panel. So go ahead and do that now. And then there's um, a couple menu options over. There's a chat button. So click on the chat as well, everyone. And the chat uh, window will open up to the right and underneath the participant window. If you need to email any of us at any time, or if you want to email me directly, um, you can type a message here. Um, just be sure that if you only want to email the panelists, you select panelists and don't select attendees and panelists. And then next, um, is I'm gonna be sharing my screen a lot. I don't think any of you will, so you won't need that option. So the next thing I wanted to say is um, for any, we don't, looks, it doesn't look like we have any attendees, so there's no general public signed in. Um, if I do see somebody sign in under the tab, you can all see it to the right if there's someone signed in. Does everyone see it? You can nod. Um, then I will um, ask Debbie if I can explain how attendees can um, participate. Um, right now, we don't have any. Next, um, oh, I think I went through the whole list. Okay, um, are there any quick general questions that anyone has about this um, Zoom or process or technology problems you're having? Okay, then the last thing I'll just mention um, is that uh, if we could each kind of pause after we've shared a thought or finished our sentence so that we're not all jumping in and talking all at the same time, I think it'll be um, really smooth if we just kind of go slow and pause between speakers. Um, the board's been doing a really great job if you've watched any of their meetings. They're um, going really smoothly and they've they've been able to really figure out how to have these meetings and not talk over each other. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, when we get into our discussion, you can unmute yourself unless you think you have a lot of noise going on in your background. Um, and then we'll just see how that goes. If, if I think it sounds like somebody's um, background is too loud or what have you, then I'm going to, I'm going to mute your sound. Um, on behalf, on your behalf, and then you can unmute yourself when you need to speak. All right, any, any, any other questions? Okay, with that, I'll do the roll call. Um, David Weingarten, Terry Whitaker, Terry Whitaker, Sorry, here. Okay, Debbie Yates. Here. Melinda Tan. Here. Rachel Tittle. Here. Christina Costable. Here. 
Claire Dixon. Here. And then we have Trustee Ryan is with us. All right. Go ahead, Debbie. Okay, um, I move to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, do we approve the agenda? Dina, how do we vote with the, if everybody's on mute, how do we do that? Well, um, we don't have to vote on approving the agenda. Okay. It's not like an official vote, but for future items, um, everyone can feel free to keep their um, themselves unmuted as we're in discussions. And then if we're about to vote, feel free to unmute yourself. And um, Kevin, if you have any advice from having been working, you know, on these meetings for a few weeks now, just let us know. No, it's it's a bit clunky. I mean, it's going to be clunky and just want to thank everybody for coming in and, and uh, participating. It's great. Everybody's doing a great job um, making sure we're staying engaged. So really appreciate it. And I appreciate the town staff, by the way, Dean and others for setting this up. Um, it's great that we're going to keep the meetings going. And thank you. OK, at this point, is there any public comment? There being no public comment or attendees, we'll go on to old business, item 5A on our agenda. The McCassin Roundabout and McCassin Boulevard, and I'd like to introduce Shannon Weber. She is the landscape architect to update us on the planning plan for the roundabout. And you should have, I think Dina's gonna pull it up. I think you actually have her visual pictures for what Shannon is proposing uh, for the landscaping around the roundabout. And Dina, I don't think we have to vote or anything on this, correct? Right, it's just for, um, your, for your questions and comments. Okay, Shannon. Uh, let's see, would you like for me to present it? Is that what I should be yes, doing? Yes, please, here? yeah, okay, go ahead and great. present. <laughs> All right, so um, let me see if I can make this a little, Dina, can you make this any larger by chance? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Perfect, thank you. And I may have you move around a little bit. Um, sure, no um, problem. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna start with the, uh, the center of the roundabout. And the three squares that you see, of course, are the art pedestals and the art. Um, for those of you who know, or maybe this is a little bit redundant for some that um, I've already spoken to about this, but the last time we was at a CAPS meeting, we were just talking about the boulders and how they were going to be situated on the site and um, how we we're going to make everything look as natural as possible out there. So um, after that meeting, I was at, uh, we went out to the site twice, pretty much all day long, and I helped the contractors set all those boulders. So what you see out there is this, this really long process of setting each boulder so that I can think about where the landscape is going to sit and how it's going to um, really kind of trail through the boulders and not hide the boulders. Um, there's a bit of a challenge because those boulders aren't very thick. I'll call it, and you still need to bury part of the boulder so that it's nice and stable. So just visualizing that as I was out there for two days and setting those boulders was um, a good thing to do. Now what I did from there is um, I had the contractor uh, drone the site over the top of the roundabout. So what I could do is take exactly where those boulders are located on the drone and underlay it underneath my CAD drawing and be able to locate my boulder symbols exactly to what's at on the site. So even though there may be a little bit of a diagrammatic illustration, they're pretty, they're pretty set on. They're, they're right where they're supposed to be located. So that made my life a little bit easier because then I knew everything I was gonna design landscape wise um, was pretty much true and I didn't have to do any guessing along the way. So that helps you understand a little bit the process that I got to, to where I'm at right now. 
Um, so then the next step, of course, was uh, creating the, the landscape design that goes around these boulders. So um, at the very top of the hill, remember this, this side is sloped up to the art features. Um, the sculptures at the top of the hill. It's a real gradual slope, but we do have some elevation in the grade. So keeping that in mind as we kind of think through this, um, everything at the top is uh, taller, like that area in particular is those tall ornamental grasses. And these grasses won't get any taller than three feet, but I did feel like they would be a nice structure to complement the pedestals that the art features sit on. Um, so those are around the um, pedestals that you see kind of in that light yellow color. And there's a couple of restrictions. I'll remind everybody again when doing this planting design, we had to keep all the plant material within the 60 foot diameter planting area per uh, traffic engineer recommendations and the city or the town recommendations. So that's, that's one criteria we had to follow. The second criteria was that most of, if not all the plant material couldn't be any higher than two feet um, because of sight distances, making sure, you know, people can see across if they want to, that the plant material is not gonna get really too tall, take over and compete against the art sculptures. Um, but a lot of it is, is about the view and the sight lines as you're going around the traffic circle um, or going through the traffic circle with your cars or your vehicles. So those are a couple of things keeping in mind as we go through this too. So for me, back to the landscape design, um, selecting plants that only get two feet tall is a bit of a challenge, um, I'll admit it. But at the same time, I made it work um, and I hope you guys like it. So we colored, um, the roundabout, what I hope to be as close as a representation of the bloom color of all of the plant material that you see in the circle. There's a little bit of variation and I'll walk through those a little bit. But like I said before, we're starting with the, with the taller plant material in the center, right around the sculptures. And then as you move away from that center, then the dark purple is the lavender. So that, Dina, if you can zoom out for me and I'll kind of, I'll show, thank you. So the lavender is the dark purple that you see in the, in the image. Um, and that plant, as if anybody knows lavender, of course, it'll only get about 18 inches tall, at most two feet tall. Um, and it blooms pretty much two to three weeks during the summertime. But what's nice about it is when it's not blooming, it still has a very nice form and shape and kind of that grayish blue color. So when it's not blooming, it's going to have that color. So that's around that circle. Um, the yellow, or it's actually kind of a rust color. I know it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, right there. Thanks, Dina. Is going to be the high sup. And that is, if you zoom out for me on the other side, uh, I know it's kind of tough. There it is on the right hand side up the top at the right. Nope, up the top. Thank you. There it is. Yeah. So that's high sip and sunset hiss, high sip. And it will actually bloom in the fall of the year. So that if you can envision it, we have the grasses and then we'll have the high sip right next to it. So that's going to bloom in kind of late summer into fall. And it'll be the foreground of the grasses, which really start to what we call bloom in late summer into the fall. So if you can kind of envision that, that foreground background sort of look. And then we have a lavender that I described before in the dark purple. From there we have, um, the white is called candy tuft. And I think that's in the left-hand corner, Dina, if you wanna to go to that. Bottom left-hand corner, sorry. And that's candy tough. And that's actually an, an evergreen perennial. So you're gonna get the dark green color even in the winter time, but the blooms, um, are the first thing that you're going to see in the springtime and it will also kind of drape over and cascade over the boulders so kind of keeping that in mind too that i don't cover up and bury those boulders with the plant material that we still get the the benefit of the structure of the boulders in addition to the plant material so that's the white the yellow that you see is the chocolate flower and that's the top left corner of the um, diagram yeah same sort of thing it's going to bloom mid-summer and it cascades over the boulders. And really those boulders that you see in that picture is very similar to the type of boulders that we have out on the site. So that gives you some sort of perspective there and, and a visual. Um, from there, we have the light purple, which is, uh, it's the verbena. I think it's in the bottom left corner. There you go, right there. And that plant will pretty much bloom all summer long. 
It's a low growing, it's not quite a ground cover, but it's a low growing perennial. So that is, as you can see, things are kind of um, tapering down as you get down the slope. Um, let's see, from there on the very edges, we have the hummingbird flower, it's the bottom right. Right there, we can see it. Yeah, right there, hummingbird. That one will bloom, excuse me, will bloom uh, almost like September and October, and sometimes into November, depending on if we get a freeze. So we got some late blooming flowers as well. Um, from there, I really want to make sure we got that evergreen color and texture, even in the winter months when nothing else is blooming. So the very edges of, uh, yeah, there you go, those kind of those blobbish looking um, yellow colors before we get to the orange ring is what we call a stone crop or a sedum. And that is at the top left. There you go, Gina. Go up right to the right, right there. The sedum variety, yeah. So that is probably the best picture that I could find to show you guys what I really envision, although the planting looking like as it gets mature. And what you see is those little crevices in between the boulders is that sedum. Again, it's a low growing perennial, not quite a creeper, but almost a creeper. And then on the very outside ring is the um, ice plant and that's the fire spinner. So that is the bottom right and that truly is a ground cover. If anybody knows ice plant, that'll pretty much bloom spring through fall. So I think I hit on all of the plant material. Um, let's see, if you want to go to the top right, Dina, let me see what's up there in that corner, or you can zoom out even. Oh, I forgot about uh, the giant flower soap wart. So that one, uh, it's in there. I don't remember. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of that purplish color, pinkish color. That is a great um, blooming flower as well. Pretty much midsummer, it'll bloom all summer long in that area. So to back up a little bit, the goal was to try and get blooming to occur pretty much all season and find the plant material that can do that. I also wanted to think about winter color and texture like I described. And also um, thinking about the height of the plant material so it doesn't get too tall to bury those boulders or cover up those boulders. Some of the plant material will cascade over. Um, so that's really the overall design intent um, with this one. And I think that's, that's really basically it. Can I answer any questions for you guys? Um, Shannon, I love it. I mean, good. I, I, good. I love doing landscape. In fact, the only question I have, I mean, I, I love all the colors. I love the height. I love how you really put all the variety into it. I think it is going to look just amazing and enhance the rocks that are already there. And my only question is, I know from personal experience, for instance, the hummingbird plant and the high mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're kind of hard to get to grow, be really like thriving. So mm. what if, for instance, I, I'm assuming that Vargas or whomever will just come in and then replace those plants if they don't make it through the winter. Mm. Um, Dina, I'll refer to you on that on, in terms of Vargas and what their what their policy is. Um, I would guess we have some sort of warranty, but I can I'll check into that. I I would assume when they when we have landscapers plant for us, there's some kind of warranty with the plants they buy. Yeah, that's typically the case. It's either a one or a two year warranty. Um, and, and actually, you know, I'll be honest, a lot of these plants I have in my backyard, I haven't had any problem with high sip. And what was the other one that you had mentioned? Oh, the hummingbird flower. Yeah, I have both of those in my yard and they're doing wonderful and great. Um, it was just the thought in, in our neighborhood, it's right along Cool Creek Drive. Yeah. So, yeah. and we ordered them all through um, Garden in a Box. Mm. And so the, you know, the plant material was wonderful. It just didn't make it through the winter very well for some reason. So you don't want to have something that is in one space basically die off over the winter and then not sure. be replaced. Yeah. So just so we make sure that we're kind of keeping up this plan because it, it is beautiful. I mean, it, yeah. it's going to look amazing when it's all like about three years from now when it's all filled Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the one thing I explained to Dina as well is that, you know, you got to be a little patient with this because it is perennials um, mm -hmm. and it takes them a couple of years, like you just mentioned, two or three years to really kind of spread out and start to fill the, all those nooks and crannies. Um, 
So it's not going to be instant, I guess, is the biggest point I want to make. And there's going to be, it seems like there's gaps and things like that until things start to grow, but it will eventually grow in and fill the space. I'm yeah, usually the word of, yeah, the word of thumb or the rule of thumb is probably almost three years before it yeah. starts to look really, yeah. really full and lush kind of thing. Exactly. Any other questions for Shannon? I just, I think it looks absolutely amazing. It's so beautiful. I just can't wait. And I think that the boulders look gorgeous too. Good. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's really spectacular. Just uh, you, you the different textures and the different colors and the cascading over the rocks. I think it, it just couldn't be better. Just beautiful. Great. Thank you. Any other comments or perspective on it? Okay, Shannon, thank you so much for this. I love this plan. I'm actually going to keep it because the way you put it together is just really amazing. Good. I'm glad. That was the whole point. I really wanted to make it illustrative for you guys so you can see exactly the plant material and, and how it works on the side. It's not always the easiest to explain, but uh, it sounds like I did it. So good. I'm glad. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, under old business, item 5B, the bus shelter public art. And I believe that Claire is going to take over since she is the chair for the bus stops and the bus shelter projects. Okay. Um, I don't know if everybody had a chance to review the application packets that Dina put together. Um, she put together really nice packets for um, Joyce Turley, Lauren Gombas, and Michelle Wallens. But if you haven't had a chance to look at those, you really should because the um, proposals that they have for the bus stops are so incredible. They're so beautiful and they're so exciting. Um, so just take a look at those and I know everyone will like them if you haven't had a chance to look at those. Um, unfortunately, one of the artists that we had selected um, just isn't available. She's been ill and Dean has been trying to reach out to her and she has not responded. So we're gonna have to move on at this point. Um, and um, there are a couple ways we could do that, but um, talking to Debbie and looking over these, what, what we're recommending is that we have, so in this round, we're gonna be doing six bus shelters and we have um, Joyce doing one, Lauren Gomba's doing two and Michelle Wallen's doing one. And what we're recommending is that we just delegate the last two to both Joyce and Michelle so that each of these three artists would be doing two bus stops. So that's what we're, that's what we're gonna propose. That I do believe we need to go through each of the um, packets and look at them and take a vote, is that right? All right, so what I'll do is I'll facilitate the review and voting of the um, three proposal, three artists with four proposals. And then we will discuss afterward um, what you guys would like to do with the last two bus shelters, um, whose artist, as she mentioned, withdrew. So if you're ready, I can um, open up the first packet. Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay. Um, normally what we would do is um, in an art selection committee that would be sending you a recommendation for a public art project, um, the, sub the art selection committee would review the proposals and score them and then send them to the arts commission for review and approval. In this case, you guys are acting as both the art selection committee and the arts um, Council or Arts Commission to re review and approve. So what I would suggest here is instead of having a form where you have criteria that you're going to score, I would recommend that you just do your regular majority vote, um, vote roll, you know, voting call. Um, so if you if you um, are in agreement with that, then we will just discuss each application separately. And then you can have a discussion about them as a group, as a whole, if you would like. But then you'll vote on each um, applicant separately. And we would do majority vote. Does that sound like it works for everybody? Okay, 
So what I thought we could do is I'll just open one at a time. I'm going to start with Joyce Turley. And uh, you may have had time to read her application or not, but I'm just going to go through the proposal itself. This first page in all the applications is the application form that they submitted. So here I just will point out Joyce is from Fort Collins. Um, she's been working in graphic design for a lot of years, illustration and such. Um, and if you had a moment, you could have um, link to our Dropbox where all of her past images um, were uh, for your review, available for your review. And then her resume is attached. And then I wanted to start out with showing you where the bus shelter would be. And this is the one that would be at Rock Creek and McCaslin at the top of the hill and on the north side. Um, does anyone Real quick, want me to show you all the bus shelters located together? Is that of interest right now? Or we can look at it together during this well, session? I think you had it. It's, it's, it's in the packet. Typical, yeah, it's the bus shelter locations. It's on the agenda. Um, yeah. OK, we can open that in just a little bit and, and just uh, remind everyone where everything is, if you'd like. So she also included a narrative description and um, her um, this is an original artwork and it was made to be large scale. Uh, so you'll see she, her topic is wildlife. And she did talk with, um, looks like here, um, Ryan Welch, and I think that's OSAC, if I remember correctly, Open Space um, Advisory Committee, and got their feedback on what kind of wildlife she should include. So um, her composition includes the great blue heron, the mule deer, excuse me, great blue heron, magpie, red tail hawk, great horned owl, mule deer, red fox, black tailed prairie dog, western painted turtle, prairie rattlesnake, variegated frill, I don't know what that is, I've never heard of that kind of butterfly. <laughs> she looks like she's going to add it later. Short grass prairie, broadleaf cattail, and plains cottonwood trees. So um, I will show you her proposal and she did render it in the bus stop setting, which is really helpful to see how it will look. You'll see here on all of the bus stops, there is a bench inside. And so when we did the tour, when I did the tour with the three artists, I pointed this out. They made measurements to make sure that there wasn't a key part of their image that would be blocked by the seating. And then in the winter, sometimes the trash can is inside the shelter. So you may see that sometimes blocking the image and there's just not a whole lot we can do about that. But um, the maintenance crew sometimes leaves it outside of the shelter when it's nice out. So this is her image without the bus shelter view. And this is a huge file, so it's taking me a minute to scroll it. So you can get an idea of what her image is capturing. And then lastly, as you can imagine, this kind of work is um, very detail oriented. So she just wanted to show you a sample of how she color fills rather than doing all of the color fill um, for this proposal phase. So with that, um, we should maybe just open for discussion um, and thoughts. I, uh, I was thrilled when I opened up all of the applicants. Um, so this is the first one you're going over. I think it's just beautiful. I think it's going to be, you know, especially captivating when you're in the bus stop, but I even think from a distance as you're driving by, you know, based on the color fill example, it's gonna be just a pretty colorful, uh, you know, whir in your, in the background as you're going by. It probably didn't make any sense, but it'll be pretty as you're going fast, but even prettier when you're close up, I guess is what I meant to say. But I just love how she incorporates the local, um, you know, trees and animals. I think it's just beautiful. I would agree. And 
since she was one of the artists who only had <clears throat> one of the choices, when you go in to look at the rest of her links for her other art, it's, it's amazing. So um, I feel really comfortable having her go ahead and do one of the other bus shelters, just given all the other stuff that she has done. Yeah. Because it, it is, it's really attractive. It is. Are these all vinyl, like overlays on it? Is it just the same? I know, I know, um, was it Michelle's was a vinyl overlay? Is yeah. It the same one as well? Yeah, my apologies. I should have started with that as well. So we'll be working with um, a 303 Signs, I think is their name in Boulder, and they're going to print these on vinyl. Um, I need to work out some budget things, but um, some of these bus shelters could be two-sided because there are people that walk behind them. This one, um, however, is just a one-sided um, bus shelter because there's nothing behind it. And then um, they're all printed on vinyl and I have to work out some details if they will be adhered to the inside of the bus shelter or the outside. And just to note, the inside of the bus shelter, if you can believe it, is the glass is dirtier than the outside <laughs> because the cars splash all the chemicals onto it when they drive by. Can you see? So I have to work out can you, those can you see it on both sides? Um, they, will, excuse me, the ones that are one-sided will be opaque, so it's unlikely you'll be able to see it from the opposite side. Okay. And the ones that are two-sided will literally be two-sided prints. And, and um, one more question: Does the color fade on all these vinyls too? And like, how long? Do, how long does it take for um, for things to degenerate? I guess. Um, I don't have an exact uh, timeline, but definitely these are meant to be temporary. Um, and I have not finalized some of the product details yet and which product they would recommend for these bus shelters. But um, that's something we'll definitely be getting from them. And, you know, their lifespan may be a couple years to potentially five. If we can get five years out of them, it would be a miracle. Um, but We'll, we'll take a look at that too as we're selecting the actual product. Yeah, and, I, go ahead. If they do get worn out at that time, would, would we just reprint them and reinstall them? That'd be up to you guys if you wanted to um, continue on with the same imagery or commission new ones. Okay. I think a fun little thing to do, but when uh, this kind of rolls out too, is maybe we can make a PDF or even like print off a couple of pieces of paper on it. Where, kids could, you know, do a little coloring mm -hmm. book of it as well. Yeah, especially, this, be especially this one. Yeah, exactly. Maybe a little blurb about these being um, local animals too, because I think kids would really like that. I think she did say in her packet that she could create some kind of educational panel that we could include somewhere if we wanted that. Well, that's a that would be a great idea. Yeah, like I think that would be awesome. Yeah. Any other discussion on Joyce's uh, bus shelter design? Would someone like to go ahead and move to accept this design? So moved. I second. Any other discussion? Okay, Dina, can we go ahead and vote? Yeah, let me hear who was the second. I missed that. Me. Oh, Debbie. Sorry, yes. Terry, if I zip through this so too fast. <laughs> Terry's like, wait, I have to take notes. Ready when you are. Okay, um, I vote yes. I can do a roll call vote. That might be easier. Okay, huh? that would be easier. Okay. You, yeah. All right. Um, David? Yes. Terry? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Melinda? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Christina? Yes. Claire? Yes. Okay. So you can restate that it was um, accepted unanimously. 
and I will go to the next one. The next one will be um, Lauren Gombas. And Lauren has two bus shelters. Uh, let's see, Lauren's from Golden. And here was her um, proposal. You might um, have read that she worked with the Historic Commission to determine what uh, imagery to use for her designs. And then um, she has also worked with uh, the Historic Commission to confirm dates and accuracy and those sorts of things. I think what we'll do though is have the Historic Commission one last time take a look before they go to the printer, just so we don't um, misprint any dates. <laughs> Uh, again, um, similar with Joyce, her images were available for you in the Dropbox to see her past work. And her resume was available. And then here are her design concepts. So um, her historical figure uh, bus shelter um, includes William Hake, Ted Asty, Josephine Roche, and Vera Taylor. And you'll see their abstract uh, images of the people. Um, what else? And her historic figure bus shelter will be just near Safeway off of Rock Creek, just north of Colton Road. The other bus shelter um, you'll see by the other artist will be here. So they'll be two across from each other. And here is her proposal. Let me scoot forward a little bit. Historic figures. So she gave us an option without dates, just in case. We, um, this one says without dates, but I see the dates. So let's look down here. Ah, this is the one without dates. So they're the same, but no dates on the bottom one. Dates on there. I like, yeah, I like the dates too. And this is her rendering that shows the shape of the bus shelter and where the seats are going, where the seat is going to cut off the images. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and I think we could take her two proposals um, one at a time for discussion since they're not related to each other. Or maybe you think they are. We, we could look at the next one. What do you want to do? Claire, I would go one at a time. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, historical figures discussion. Um, I love the way she organized it into the panels so that it fits so well into the bus shelter. Um, and I also love that it's historical and educational and it's a tribute to these people, but it feels so modern and so so alive you know with the with the color scheme and just the way it's laid out so i'm i love it oh claire i think you nailed it i think that's exactly <laughs> how i would I sum it up i mean i couldn't have said it any any better it's 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 spectacular it's got this modern contrasting color twist on the historical um uh you know narratives of these people um it's 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 just so incredible and so different from the last one. I mean, this is these are really blowing me away. Well, and it's going to look really neat with this on the north side of the road. Well, no, the west side of by Safeway and the road, and then the other artists will be on the other side, which will look pretty amazing together too. And do we like it with or without dates? If I like it with. I really like the date. Yeah. I like the dates. Me too. So. Tina, do we need to vote specifically? Um, no, I think we should vote for, uh, vote for each concept separately. Okay. Uh, Dina, would it be easier just to ask who opposes as opposed to going through and doing a roll call? Um, Kevin, what do you think? Is there any um, thought on, on that? I just noticed at the board meetings you guys were doing roll call votes, so I thought of that. Yeah, if it's something official, it's, it's, you know, just appropriate usually for a roll call. So that's what we've had to, you know, even for usually on the board, if we're not spending money, a roll call is not necessary. Uh, but for this, just the, instead of raising hand, it's harder. So it, as a practice, it 
very quick roll call. That's probably best. Okay. All okay, right. So, okay, so I move to accept the bus shelter historical figures with dates by Lauren Gombas. Second. Okay, Dina, you gonna do a roll call? Yes, roll call. David? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Melinda? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Christina? Yes. Claire? Yes. Okay, and I'm assuming, Dina, since we have unanimously approved the historical figures with dates, we don't really need to address the second or the other illustration. Is that correct? We do because um, this okay. is for a different bus shelter. Oh, that's that, right, because she yeah. has two. Yeah, so she has, the next one would be, her theme is original town, and the committee selected the bus shelter right next to town hall. Oh, wait, I, I mean, there, there's two illustrations for historical feature, feature figures. One's with dates and one is without dates. Oh, correct. I'm assuming since we approved with dates, we don't have to address that one underneath it. Oh, yes. Dates. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I misunderstood. Okay. So here is her um, proposal. Can you see the whole thing left to right? I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, this is her proposal for original town and again she worked with the historic commission to figure out what um, images to use. And then this is what it will look like with the bus shelter structure in front of it. Thoughts? Ideas? So okay. I, I, I really this. love, I, I love this um the art here i think it's really cool the one thing that i would and this is my like a little nitpicky or getting into the weeds i love the font on this you know with like how it's because it's contemporary and a little funky i wish that she could potentially do that this type of font on the other one as well because mm. i think the other one's a little bit more the font on the other one's a little bit more bland and it mm. would be more consistent with this one Good. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, that's yeah. really good input. So I really like it, but it's hard for me to read the font. Hmm. I like this font a lot better because the other one, I'm not exactly sure, like with the dates, what the numbers say. <laughs> I don't know. This one just seems more clear. Good I wonder point, if David. it's because it's yeah. smaller, like, with, with, like at this at this scale, like it looks like serrier, you can't tell it's a P, but maybe when you're in the bus shelter, you know, it'll look a little different. It is a unique, it is a unique font. And even if, even if the top, um, the other bus shelters font was a little bit different, maybe like a little, maybe the font can be a little bit more dated, like more of a Times New Roman for you know, not, but not that, you know, something else that just like, I don't know, adds, adds to it a little bit more. And I, I also really like it. I, I would like to know more about like, I don't know how she'd do this or if there's something online you could see, but to look up maybe why she did certain things or like why there's a moon in the, in a. That's the eye house. Oh, is that the outhouse? Oh, okay, cool. Oh, or, but even about like the, the coyote, I guess we have coyotes. Is that, or maybe, I don't know. Or I just, I'm curious as to what like information she got to make this actually. Maybe it's just me personally, but. You know, that that's a good point. Maybe we could compile some kind of, um, you know, explanation for the bus shelters and, and keep it at town hall for anyone who's interested in learning more. Just. Um, like an artist statement or something? Well, I did see Dina going through all this stuff and thank you again for this amazing packet that you put together. It's so easy to go back and forth and reference all this the way you did it. Um, but there on the town website, there is actually a category called photo album, a town photo album. We could probably even take 
pictures of all these and, you know, or somehow or another put it on the town website so they know what all these pictures are, what they're about and how they came about, that type of thing. And I haven't shown you guys yet or even announced it, but there's a cultural arts web page that I'm working on. And uh, if we had time tonight, I'd be happy to show you the draft. But when I'm finished, my plan would be to send it to you for review so you can make comments or suggestions. And this is definitely somewhere where that information can live, is on the town website. It'll be its own page called Cultural Arts. That's a great idea. I love that. Yeah, yes. and link to the CAPS page. So they both link to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and overall, I'm just blown away by this design. I think it's incredible. Me too. Yeah, I like this one. I would agree. I agree. I really like it. My only thing is this is the numbers that I'm finding hard to read, not the font. Mm -hmm. 1896. Um, yeah. Is that maybe because we're doing kindergarten, it all just looks like letters? <laughs> but um, <laughs> just you know, <laughs> that's the only thing I'm having a hard time reading. So, Dina, do we need to, on her other submission that we've already approved, um, if there's any thought to tweak the font on the other one, the hidden figure, historical figures, do we need to do something amended or anything, or do we just make that suggestion, um, you know, over to Lauren? How does that work? Normally what would happen is you would approve the, the design concept, and then she'll go into her final design phase, and um, we would pro provide to her any comments you had. For example, the font is very hard to see in this design. Um, we did like the font in the other design and just ask her if, if what she could do to solve the problem. And then, you know, graphic designers are sometimes very particular about what fonts they use, but um, she may be totally open and amenable to it. And um, so we would work that out after the contract signed and we're ready to move forward and she just needs to do some final tweaking. So, okay, so I don't think you have list. to change okay. your vote for okay. or amend the vote from the last one. Um, however, for this one, since you want to make that part of your comments to her, is you can make the motion to ask her to solve the problem of the font being hard to read. Okay, would anybody like to move to accept this submission with the edits? Yes. Who moved on that? Who made the motion? Me, to accept? Terry. Okay. And who seconded? David, was that you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, roll call, Dina, for the acceptance of the submission, Original Town. David? Yes. Terry? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Melinda? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Christina? Yes. Claire? Yes. <clears throat> okay. The motion approved unanimous. All right. Okay, Dina. we'll go on to uh, Michelle Wallen. Michelle. Way over there. Okay, here she is. All right, so Michelle had one bus shelter. Uh, here's her application. She is from Conifer. Uh, this was her application letter in January. And her um, resume. Uh, and links to her images were available to you in the Dropbox. And then uh, this is where her bus shelter would be across from the Safeway. And you can see here in this um, map that there is a walkway behind her. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the shelters that we're considering having it two sided. Now this is quite a, d a good distance. Um, I don't know the approximate distance, but it's not as though someone's going to see it very clearly, but it sure would be a benefit to these people to see a, you know, a uh, um, 
a nice image when they're looking this way instead of the back of a the vinyl is just white so this is the one i need to kind of work out the details on being two-sided and then here is her proposal she had a theme of outdoor recreation so she did um, talk with the ProStack uh, committee chair, I think it was the chair, and he provided her with information and ideas on what images to use. So this is her proposal with the bus shelter structure in front. And oh yeah, and then she photoshopped it into a picture of the bus shelter. So that's really handy. Mm -hmm. Now she does have hers kind of pictured as though it might be um, somewhat transparent. And for her in particular, I need to see if that's even possible because we want it to be two sided. So again, I need to still, now that we know what the designs are, I have to show them to the printer and really hone in on the details. And um, any questions, thoughts, or ideas? Well, I love the I way can. she photoshopped it so you can see the back of the apartment buildings there, which makes you feel like you really would like that to um, not be opaque. So, mm -hmm. cause that, that looks, the way she did that, that looks really amazing. The colors are pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. I think uh, it's nice yeah. to light colors and, you know, it really brightens it up too. I think it's really good. And so different from the other one. But that's, you know, one of the nice things about it. They're all different. Um, I do like the colors and I like how it's kind of a, a modern representation of what we are in Superior. It's not my favorite um, overall, but um, but I do love that it's modern. I love the colors and I love um, how, um, I mean, it's, it's nice. <laughs> uh, one thing I think that, I don't know, something to consider is that since each of them are kind of separate with the font thing, having the font be different rather than standardized across all of them might be okay. Mm -hmm. This one has no font, so that's good. Yeah, I think there's, there's writing in the black circles. Mm. Oh. In the what? The black uh, circles. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's clever. Did not that. see that before. Oh my gosh. Ooh, I like that. Oh, yeah. 1.2 1. Right. miles to Colton Trail. That's interesting. And equestrian trails. Well, um, let's see this other one. 2.2 miles to Marshall Lake and Rainbow and Cutthroat Trout Fishing. Interesting. Uh, she gets more points for me mm -hmm. for that. That's that's very clever. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is very clever. But I didn't notice it. Did anybody else notice that? No, no. So no, Rachel, that was good. good. <laughs> yeah. Is there a way to make that more prominent, or? Well, you have to remember the scale of this. Okay. So. Um, this right here is the top of the um, seat, and I believe that was um, about 40 inches tall. So the scale is probably, here's another maybe 40 inches or so from here to here. So those words are going to be pretty visible. Okay. I can, however, if you, you want to know the details during the final design tweaking, I can um, ask her what the size of these letters are, just to see. You know, if they're 14 font, they're gonna be too small, but if they're, you know, an inch or two tall, they'll be just fine. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion I like on the, the submission in the, by Michelle? In the back as well. Oh, I love that picture. That, 
That brings mm -hmm. out the color. That's beautiful. That, that's mm -hmm. nice. Okay, would anybody like to move um, so regarding moved. this submission? So moved. I, I second. second. Okay. Hey, roll call, Dina. David? Yes. <clears throat> Harry? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Melinda? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Christina? Yes. And Claire. Yes. Okay. Submission by um, Michelle Wolens was accepted unanimously. And um, now, does she have another design that she provided us if we're going to give her another shelter? No, she doesn't even know we are, you are considering it. So um, we can start that discussion now if you would like to, to discuss next steps for the last two bus shelters. And um, I can show you where those are. So um, number two is here across from Town Hall. It would be, oops, I spelled that wrong, my apologies. It's supposed to be Kite Root is the theme. And then the other one is number four, which is across um, right next to Purple Park. And that would be the Mine Camp theme. So number four and number two. Mm -hmm. What is the kite route? The, the, the kite route was the, um, the route, there was a, train route that went through Superior and to Boulder and it kind of uh, turned itself around and so the shape of it kind of looked like a kite. Okay. So it's a train, a train theme. Ah. So Dina, maybe you can um, discuss what our options are. Sure for these, for the last two bus shelters? Sure, so uh, the last two bus shelters, there's a few options. Um, one would be that you go back to the drawing bar board and do another call for entry and find new artists. Um, the second option, and these are in no order um, and no preference for, from you know, my perspective, just it's up to you guys. Uh, and number two would be to go back to the list of artists who applied and take the next one or two artists from the list. Um, and then the third option would be to ask one of uh, the two gals that got one bus shelter already, Joyce or Michelle, if they would like to do a second bus shelter. And I, I could, you guys could entertain any other ideas that I didn't just think of. So I like the first idea of opening it up again to the possibilities, just because I also know we were discussing about the Native American possibility and contacting like the tribe leaders or reaching out and seeing if that's of interest. Uh, maybe you can talk about that again, Dina, but I just, we thought maybe also if they had an actual indigenous person that might be interested in doing it or not, so. I mean, I do like that idea. I feel like um, that was something, it sounded like that was gonna take a long time to establish that kind of relationship and talk about that, but I do really hope that at some point in the future, one of our bus shelters, maybe in another round that we're doing this, can have that, that theme. Oh, right, um, oh, that's where round then yeah like maybe for another round but I think like for this round it's probably just simpler to stick with the themes that we already came up with you know okay yeah that makes sense <clears throat> because what's the time frame on this Dina so we've approved four submissions and you're going to talk to the company in Boulder that does the you know the wrap how long does it take do we have a time frame on that somewhere a matter of weeks Really, I mean, these, these can be in um, for sure before June, and maybe even faster. It just depends on um, the company. I have not been in touch with them in the last two weeks to see if they're working or not. I would assume that they're at least going to start working May 4th, like uh, many other people. So, 
<clears throat> so I would almost vote to open up uh, to the other, to the, the two artists who only submitted one and seeing if they have a second one. First of all, for the sake of time. Second of all, for a potential uniformity, right? Having the same style twice for, you know, for each artist. And then uh, just to remember that if these do only last two to three years, um, this is going to be a fun ongoing project for CAPS potentially to completely change it up like or two or three years. So, you know, we're not investing the, you know, the, the character of that bus stop forever. It's, it is just one of our temporary um, art pieces. So that's why I would vote for asking those two current artists to have another um, go at another stop. And let me just say too, I mean, it's unfortunate that Rosa Cruz can't participate this time because it, we really did like her art. Um, but other than Rosa and these three artists, you know, the, the four of them were really, the quality of their work was quite a, quite a bit more impressive than everybody else that submitted, um, submitted a uh, proposal. So the thinking is that we've already got the cream of the crop here and there's no reason to go back and reevaluate. So they would just need to submit something based upon the two themes that we have. Mm -hmm. And maybe they should both submit both themes. So there'd be two designs from each of them. We may not have um, enough proposal funding for the project. Um, to have them each do a proposal, that means we would pay four more design concept fees. Um, oh, good point. We could pay um, one artist for each theme. Um, we weren't budgeted to do more than that. Now, you do have um, contingency funding for this year, so it could be up to you if you decide to have them each do and do a competition um, between each other. So, well, and they may each, you know, say, these are the two things that we're looking at. What would you like to, would you be interested in submitting another proposal for one of these? I'm sure they'll both be interested. I don't think we have to worry about that. <laughs> uh, well, but then they come back and say, hey, I'd like to do the kite route or I'd like to do the yeah. mine camp thing. And then you go to the other one and say, would you be willing to do something on whatever we have left over? So how much is the proposal fee if they each did two? Is it something within the contingency funds we could do? Oh yeah, for sure. It's just $250 per design. So it would be $500 if um, they each do one proposal and um, a total of, and then it would be a thousand dollars if we asked them each to do two. I mean, if we can afford it, I guess there's no harm in looking at more proposals, is there? The only challenge I see is that $250 is pretty, pretty low. And um, you'll see like in Joyce's proposal, it took her a really long time to design that because she did it um, uh, by hand and she couldn't even finish the shading because it just takes so much time. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think we need to keep that in mind as well. If we know we're only gonna pick um, one and we know we like both, both the work of both ladies, um, I guess I would, I would suggest to just make a decision now um, and not waste their time and, and ours, really. Okay. It's in kind that, of, yeah. In that case, um, just looking at the, um, the locations uh, of where, you know, they're each assigned at this point, Joyce is already at the top of the hill there. So it probably would make sense to have um, Michelle across from her so that just for variety's sake so that there's not two of the same design style right next to each other. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Yeah, it's a good idea. Who's doing one? 
Who's the artist that's doing one? Uh, number one is Lauren, and that theme is Old Town. Historical figures. Okay, so two is, is the kite route. Um, so either one of them would be different than uh, Lauren Gombas. The Lauren's, yeah. I personally would suggest um, Joyce doing two only because I live near there and I like Joyce's work. <laughs> Can you remind me which one Joyce was? Yeah, which one was Joyce? The wildlife or? one. The detailed one, right? That, that yeah. Oh, oh it almost looked like a coloring book page. Joyce is there. Because mm -hmm. Michelle's the other option, is that right? She did the recreation? Yeah. yeah. Well, to me, the kite route would look like it fit better with the Old Town thing. So one and Two should be the kite route, I would think. You know, whoever's doing the kite route, like it says. So, um, since Lauren did the old town, but she's already doing two. She already well, did two, but that would be cool. I also I like Lauren, but I think aren't we just picking between Michelle and Joyce? Yeah. yeah. So if Joyce looks like, for lack of a better expression, the coloring book page, she would probably do a really good job with that. Uh, kite route because I'm guessing it will have a lot more detail like with the train and stuff like that. Um, Probably a map. She, I bet she would do a map. Well. A map or yeah I mean it she has a lot more detail in hers mm -hmm. almost more like pen and ink whereas the recreation one that's just my thought but so either way it would be they would be stuck. It would be two different artists next to each other. Yeah. Is that what we're thinking? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And just a quick note. Um, Lauren submitted her two proposals, and they have very like they're exact the same aesthetic, very similar. Whereas if you look at uh, Michelle's portfolio, it's very, um, very diverse in her aesthetic. So if your instructions for her would be you want the aesthetic to be similar to the recreation, or if you want the aesthetic to be different, she would do that. So you'll see her portfolio. She has a, a range of aesthetic um, qualities that she can accomplish. So I would give her some feedback on that. Yeah, I would just leave that up to her discretion, you know, whatever style she thinks best fits that theme i think so too yeah so dina do we need to put forth a motion for each of these artists or do we just request that um they do the submission the rfp and then we'll come back to it and vote on it how do, how's that going to work yeah, i suggest doing a you know a formal vote on um uh allowing Michelle to, to do number four design concept and Joyce number two design concept. And it could all be one motion you wanted. Okay, would anybody like to move for um, that? Who was that? Who was that? Claire. Okay, Claire, you wanna, you wanna actually second. do the whole Jerry. motion? Okay, I'll move uh, that we um, ask Michelle Wallens to um, uh, present a proposal for the Mind Camp theme and for Joyce Turley to create a proposal for the Kite Root theme. I second. What's that, Debbie? Oh, I second. Any other further discussion? Okay, Dina, roll call. David? Yes. Terry? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Melinda? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Christina? Yes. And Claire? Yes. Okay, and Terry, can you read back the motion? Uh, <laughs> I was just That's taking notes, but Claire moved to um, have uh, Michelle Wallens
present a proposal on the Mind Camp thing and Joyce Turley to present um, a proposal on the kite root thing. Okay, good. And it passed unanimously. Yeah. And so Dina, then you'll take the next step to reach out to them. I will. And the next step will for me to um, execute contracts with them and then have them package their uh, designs up in a final format and have a discussion with the vinyl printer and then answer these couple design questions um, that you put forward to Lauren and um, then answer the questions I have about which vinyl product we're going to finalize. And if there's any significant changes, which I don't expect, but you'll just know always after we execute a contract with an artist, if something happens in their final design phase where there are significant changes to their proposal, it'll always come back to you for review and approval before they are allowed to proceed with their um, project. Okay. All right. Um, under old business, item 5C, the Prairie Dog Public Art Project. Um, how are we doing on time? I think, well, we bet we're a little about 10 minutes over here. Yeah, um, I think we're doing okay. We did 40 okay. minutes on the last topic, which was what I had scheduled. Okay, because we know, just so you guys know, they literally turn everything off at like a couple minutes before eight o'clock. So we have to make sure we get everything all done by eight o'clock, which is a good thing, actually. Um, all right, sounds good. It is, um, Dean, if you can pull up, these are so cute, the illustrations for the fabrication of the four foot high prairie dogs. And let's see if we have a discussion on that and your thoughts on this design. I like this. I like a smile. <laughs> oh, they're, they're great. Yeah, I agree. I like it too. I agree. Any yeah. other discussion? No, I just, I just want to see him painted, you know. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> they're really good. Okay, well, I move that we accept this prairie dog design for fabrication and move forward with fabrication. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Dina, roll call. David? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Melinda? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Christina? Yes. And Claire? Claire? Did we lose Claire? I don't think we have her mic on. Could she give a thumbs up? There we are. Claire, your vote? Okay, yes. Okay, unanimous, it passed unanimously to move forward with the Prairie Dog fabrication model. And how long did the cool part about this, which Dina put together, which is, um, oh, there she is. Okay, that was so good. Okay, um, Dina put together this, uh, very cool draft of um, the time frame for the prairie dog pro for the prairie dog project. So, Dean, do you want to review that at all? At least now we feel like we're moving forward on this, which is a good thing. Let me share my screen again. While she's finding that, um, Kevin, do you have any thoughts, perspectives on the prairie dogs? I did see a stream. Someone was, I don't know if it's on the 027 or something about the concern about prairie dogs at 88. Is there any like <laughs> public thoughts we need to address on this? I, I don't think so. I, I, well, there it goes. I, no, I don't think so at all. Yes, I mean, people are worried about the prairie dogs, but they're, you know, part of life and as part of Colorado and traps and then relocated. 
That's what I put on Facebook, but I didn't put yeah, on that, Facebook. Okay, that's what I saw. Okay. Right, so. right. Now they're being relocated to a raptor farm in Fort Collins. <laughs> so it's not like they're being relocated to, you know. Live. Disney. <laughs> so, so anyway, but yes, I, I think prairie dogs are part of Colorado. You can't live in this community without seeing them. And so I think they're awesome and should be celebrated. And I love this idea. I don't think you need to worry about it. And if anybody gives you guys heck over it, then you know what? They could join the committee. There you, <laughs> go. you know, they could apply to be on the committee. Like, whatever. Don't worry about it. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, Dina. Okay. So um, this is uh, probably just the second time you guys have seen a, a public art project implementation plan that I've drafted for you. And you will note it's just a draft. Um, so usually these implementation plans will go over the goal of the project, the timeline, the art selection process, the approval process, any design requirements, selection criteria, and the budget. So you'll see these with every public art project we start. So we're all on the same page and you um, give me guidance on, on how to implement projects. So that's what this is. And I kind of just came up with just a very brief um, description so we can get started on how we're gonna promote this activity. And so the first paragraph just describes that. I think there's a lot more tweaking and um, creativity to, to be involved here, but uh, conceptually, I wanted to just see if there are any other goals that we should include when we're starting to promote this thing. So for example, what, these are the things I've heard from you guys, is that we're doing an artist design contest that brings fun and whimsy to Superior. And you know, whether or not we keep the next part of the sentences um, uh, doesn't matter to me. I was just trying to be creative. Uh, the imagery of the not forgotten prairie dog. Um, artists will be invited to submit basic design ideas to be juried by you. And there will be 12 artists um, selected to bring their designs to reality by embellishing the four foot tall fiberglass prairie dog sculpture. And the sculptures will be um, dotting the landscape throughout Superior. So just off, off the, um, uh, offline, if you would like to help contribute to, you know, being creative writer with me on this, please let me know. And uh, if you guys have any ideas right now, I can just jot down for other goals of the projects project that I can add. Um, we can entertain those thoughts right now too. Looks fine to me. Yeah, it looks fine to me too. And did we have marketing or promotion in here somewhere? No, um, I didn't include that. That could be another section I'm happy to add. Because this is really the goals and the artist and budget, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Maybe put at the bottom just how to promotion, the promotion of it. Sure. We, by the way, just, we have some of those wooden prairie dogs left still. Great. So here's a tentative timeline. Um, this month, you guys will review and you've already approved the styrofoam model. It will take about four weeks to fabricate. So if I call Icon Poly tomorrow, we can expect the sculptures to be delivered in about four weeks. Uh, we should immediately start working on distributing the call for artists. So my next step is to, to uh, draft the call for artists which I can email you uh, for comments uh, probably next week, as early as next week. Get that distributed and really um, promote the heck out of it to get um, artists to apply. The idea here is um, then you guys will review the design concepts and select the top 12 artists to invite to implement their design. Uh, the next step is um, the artist will pick up, and I think we can give them about a month to implement their design. 
Uh, one thing that I will do though is I will confirm the artist's availability and their schedules. And let's say we have an artist that you selected and they say, I'm sorry, I can't work on this till August. Well, then we probably need to select a different artist. So I will bring any, um, any uh, uh, challenges that I find when I actually talk to the artist who you want to invite and I'll let you know at the next regular meeting if we need to make any changes. And then next, um, I would guess we could have the sculptures delivered and installed um, before August. So it's an ambitious uh, schedule, but I do think it's very doable. I'm sure there's lots of artists very hungry right now, so yeah, exactly. they yeah, probably exactly. would like something to do. <laughs> do we have the locations um, finalized or have we thought about that yet? That is next on the agenda. Um, okay. We have not had much, much discussion at all about that, so we do need to come up with a plan. So the art selection process, um, I kind of just briefly went through. Um, the thing I want to really um, point out is this is um, this project you've set up to be a request for proposals rather than a request for qualifications. So in this case, you're asking artists to give you design concepts ahead of time without a stipend. And uh, I just want to make sure you're aware of that. Um, and if you want to change that, now is the time to do that. Um, the other, uh, what would you call it, um, community icon sculpture projects like this, uh, when they do a request for proposals, they'll often provide um, a line drawing um, for artists to draw on and submit. So here's an example. Mm -hmm. We could do that and make it a lot easier. Um, it doesn't have to be a required drawing to be submitted, but it's just an option. So I would suggest that we do something like that where we offer it and um, then they can also submit their own, let's say they want to do it in Illustrator or something. Yeah, I, I think that makes practical sense. Whatever direction you think is most appropriate, Dina, because you're the, you're the one who would know the best way to handle this. So I'm okay with whatever we do. Yeah, I mean, if we did a stipend, how much would we do for this? Well, there is a we will give a budget. stipend to the 12 people you select. Um, to pay them for their time. And so down oh, here okay. in the budget, I've um, put a hundred dollar stipend, which is pretty tiny, but you know, it's better than nothing, you know, and, and for an artist who may only paint the prairie dog and not turn it into a sculpture uh, or a collage, it, you know, a hundred dollars will get them, you know, a couple hours of work to draw on a line drawing. So some artists charge about $50 an hour. Some artists charge $100 an hour for design work. So it just depends on the caliber of artists that's going to submit. Wait, so just to clarify, so, so they would doctor up this line drawing. And then are we also getting uh, examples of their past work so we, that could help us visualize you know, what they're talking about for the line drawing? Yeah, so their application would include their resume, their images of their past work, and then the line drawing. Oh, I, okay. I think that's great. Yeah. So um, just to go back up to the art selection process here. So I'll facilitate the review of CAPS's review of the, the proposals. You guys do your voting. And then um, I'll provide notice to the 12 artists to proceed with Im implementing their design. And so we will actually sign a contract with them at that point to implement their design. And then I will just oversee their implementation to make sure they're actually going to provide us the uh, design they proposed. Okay. They will come and pick up at the town hall or at 1500 Colton. Yeah, I'm not really sure yet. We'll, we can figure those details out. Um, the sculptures will arrive, let's say, by the end of May. So I need to work with the um, uh, 
park staff and other facility owner staff to see where we can store them. We do have the storage unit uh, in community park and we also have a storage unit in the um, self storage off of uh, Cold Creek Drive. So, and we have a huge building <laughs> at 1500 Colton that we could perhaps fit 12 sculptures in. Um, but I don't know the timing of construction either. So I have to work out all those details. Okay, sounds good. I think that's So it. these contracts will be um, under $1,000. So uh, I'm, excuse me, they're 1,200. So Leslie will um, sign the contracts and I'm um, uh, making the assumption that the uh, um, designs don't need to go um, further up the chain uh, since they're a very small contract amount. So. Any other oh, excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong, the wrong line item right here, 700 per artist project fee, $700 each. Okay, any other discussion? Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is still under business 5D. And Melinda, do you want to bring us up to speed on the main event? There's really not a lot to bring up to speed. We, uh, we sent, you know, I sent around some emails on trying to get some ideas just for people to vote on the food trucks. Um, I didn't get a lot of input from ideas on um, local restaurants that we wanted. I just, I said maybe Wayne's Barbecue is not a good idea because it, we potentially want them for the shindig. Um, so I didn't know if anyone had any other ideas. These are all little details we can work out in subcommittee, but I just, um, you can like pull up the updates from Castle. I mean, I, it feels a little sacrilegious even planning this because of the sensitive situation we're in. I mean, I know towns are canceling their October fests. And so I don't know really how much planning to do going forward. I, it's, it's kind of a, well, it's not kind of, it's very strange right now. So um, any input do we, do on we that? Do we have a plan B just in case? Yeah, is there a plan B? Right. Like a plan, a plan B date, because that's what we're doing with all of our events with, um, you know, with, with, with our company is, you know, we're pretty much playing leapfrog <laughs> with dates, you know, as things kind of postpone and um, we're moving them off into some other time frame. So we're just not losing everything that we've worked so hard for. And the fact that we can do, you know, we're, our expectation is probably like moving, you know, things are going to be hopefully up and running by, you know, late August into September. Um, beginning of August feels a little spooky, but mm. um, having something that would be, you know, a, a plan B just in case as, as Polis keeps, you know, continues to move the marker um, for the safety of everybody is pretty smart. I do think... Yeah, plan B, maybe not time-wise because this is an outside event, but perhaps we could tweak it a little bit um, so that there are social distancing options, right? So uh, we, we talked about having all of the artists in one area. Maybe we don't do that anymore and we separate them. And maybe it's not immersive. Maybe we don't go inside their tent. Maybe we have it open. I mean, there are probably some tweaks we can do to make it uh, COVID sensitive. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, this, the, the food trucks seem okay to me. Um, I, I just don't know how much planning we should go forward with. But she's done a lot. So we already have a really good event as it stands. So um, she was just working on partners and um, um, I mean, maybe we should just continue. My, my two pennies on this is just making sure that we're doing as much as we can in order to keep it in place and then potentially having a drop dead date as to like, you know, at this point we can go no further on August 8th. And mm -hmm. then, you know, either we go to plan B, which is like mm -hmm. something in 
September or October, or, you know, it just gets canceled from there. Hmm. David, do you have a suggestion on a drop dead date where we decide to go forward or not? Assuming that the board hasn't made, you know, the decision um, for us, because that is, you know, ultimately, I think their, their decision if we're having events um, this summer. Well, since it's a free event, I mean, I think that you could probably do, I mean, May 31st, like somewhere around there, maybe even around a Memorial Day to kind of think about October. I mean, I think that we're, we're five weeks out from there. And, you know, I think we're going to really feel, have a really good understanding of what's going to happen over the summer um, within the next month. I think over the next week, even, you're going to be hearing about a lot of festivals and summertime big series, performance series and stuff that are going to all start going away. Um, and I bet that we'll be hearing, you know, getting some more indications around like, you know, camps and whatnot that are going to happen over the summer. And so by May 31st, we should have a really good indication of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. I mean, I think really that just the potential is to postpone kind of our advertising campaign. I think that's fine. You know, we talked about putting a um, save the date type of thing in April, but I think that would be premature. So, you know, just kind of the wait and see for advertising it to make sure it's sensitive. Um, yeah, I don't think that we would need to even ever, I mean, I don't know what the no. time is. I, pardon yeah. me for being like speaking out of turn of like, because I don't really know what the marketing timeline is, is what we've done in the past, but especially for free events, you really don't have to go that far out with any paid advertising, I feel. Yeah, I think there's, yeah. Now, Dina, are we like, do we need to vote on the budget? Do we need to vote on the budget? And are there ways that if like David's comment that maybe we do have to cancel it, that August 8th is going to be too soon? How does the town handle the, you know, the expenses and the costs of the budget? So if, if I could just wait, Dean, I think I need to weigh in here. Yeah, okay. So guys, let's, I, I, it's such strange time. So it's, it's strange that we're on this and why I appreciate everybody's comments at this point. We should be planning as if that event is going to happen in August. Uh, just as right now, we're planning for the 4th of July event as if the 4th of July is going to happen. We just approved some uh, contractor for the tents uh, that would be both for the, you know, the big tent in the 4th of July and, and the tents that will be for the main event. It doesn't mean that we don't have the ability to cancel. And so in this very weird environment, you have to you know, plan accordingly uh, and, and hope for the best. But if there is a point where we need to pull the plug because it's just that it's, it's, it's not in the best, uh, best interest of, of public safety for the community where the county has decided to have a shelter in place or the town has decided to have a shelter in place or for whatever reason, then we'll pull. I absolutely agree that we should, that, that I'd love to hear whether or not there should be a drop dead date to make that decision. I would not encourage a drop date, drop dead date of May 31st. That would be way too early. That's still, you know, two and a half months, almost two and a half months before, or, or really, uh, you know, 10 weeks really before that event, before the main event, that still gives us plenty of time. I think a drop dead date more in the six week out period for caps is, is appropriate. I recognize that there's going to be some planning and some frustration if things get canceled, but I, you know, I think we all need to be hopeful that things don't get canceled. Things will occur. And as of now, it's, it's not canceled. It's on our calendar. And this group and town staff should be planning accordingly. Now, I do agree with the comment around the save the date. It doesn't feel like a save the date distributed in April was critical. So no problem with doing that. But there are, are some advertisements and awareness that we need to just put on the clock. You know, so if there are, you know, calendars put out by, you know, what used to be mm. Rock Creek Living Magazine, it's now called something else. Or the camera or other other folks, we certainly need to be aware of what those advertising deadlines look like and make sure we're meeting those advertising deadlines. But postcards for save the dates or something like that, it's, it's fine. It's still April, but 
Yeah. Anyway, underlying message, probably talk too much. Underlying message, let's plan as if the main event is occurring. We, it's very unlikely that a plan B for a alternative date will be an option just because so many other things are going to be backed up in September and October. And we certainly can't do it later than that. Um, but I do think having things, if we are, I, I will expect we are still social distancing six feet away. And so encouraging the vendors and others to be aware that, you know, social distancing is probably going to be practiced. And that means that, you know, tents don't have walls and things like that. That feels like good planning, but please, please continue with the planning there then. Uh, okay, Dina, Great do you want to, yeah, thank you, uh, Kevin. Uh, Dina, can you kind of pull up uh, Castle's uh, PDF, her schedule? Sure, we, we, we um, can look at that real quick. We've got, oh, um, no, okay, no, that's, we don't have, we to have 20 that. minutes left, but what I, <laughs> what I want to do is answer Debbie's question that we don't have to vote on the budget. I just wanted to make you aware of where the line items are falling right now. The budget's 25,000, it's already approved. So, okay. um, you know, how those line items uh, puzzle out is um, gonna shift um, over the next couple months. Um, so I guess really the, the, the thing here is, is, are there any questions or comments at this point? Um, I do have uh, one comment. I didn't see a specific line item, item for kind of uh, extra staff and labor. Is that included? You kind of like, um, you know, you're going to kind of, you know, hire maybe the superior staff to help with the putting up the fences and yeah. taking down and stuff. So. so I did cut that out of the budget. It was $1,500 last year to have two guys from Vargas on site all day and all night. So I did cut that because we were running over budget. Um, the rentals came in higher this year than last year by almost double. Um, last year I had gotten a discount from the rental company because I gave them some business later on down in the year. Um, but with our equipment rental contract this year, um, this is just how this event penciled out. So um, I did cut the two extra guys to be there all day and made the assumption that um, I could, uh, you know, call in some favors from our field staff and see if we can get one or two guys during the event and then just, um, you know, offer them a day off later in, in the, you know, week or month, what have you. So I do need to work on that. And then the food truck minimums are a little higher this year as well. Um, anything else I'm going to see here to point out? Um, the artist stipends went down from 1000 to 750 each. And the marketplace actually raised their price $100. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Kind of there's, there's just something about that. Kevin, I don't know if you want to jump in here, but that there's something about the marketplace charging us for this. Did you guys have a discussion on that? We, we, we've not had a discussion on that. I, I think you guys know how I feel about Bricksmore, so. <laughs> and I'm sympathetic to the fact that they're, you know, I'm sure their tenants are not eager to pay rent these days. So they're having their own issues, but it, I, we're not gonna insert, I, I, I wouldn't want to insert myself in. I, I trust staff negotiating as best as okay. possible. And yeah, it's, you know, one more sort of thing that goes in the memory bank every time I need mm. to do something for Bridgemore. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any more discussion? I think we're good with that. Mm -hmm. And then this, the last thing I wanted to report is tomorrow I'll send out a doodle poll for the subcommittee to meet next week. And uh, we will go over the um, tentative lists of artists to invite and then uh, make a selection of who to invite to give us proposals. And um, in that case, uh, I think it would be helpful to 
open this real quick, um, Melinda, as you requested. So we would do right here, request concepts from the artists, and then CAPS will review the artist concepts um, in your, uh, whoops, my screen's not showing the whole thing. Do you guys see the whole timeline? Uh, I do. Okay, in, in your um, May meeting, CAPS will review the artist proposals. So that's the timeline I wanted to really show, show you as well. All right. Anything else? We're good? Yeah. All right, um, old business, 5C, just a couple things in here. Um, the deadline was extended uh, for- Sorry, Debbie, sorry, my phone was on mute. I have one other thing I wanted to mention about the main event. Um, I think it would be wise to consider attendance and that if they do lift restrictions, I, I personally would be very hesitant to go to a large group of people. And that's something we may want to consider even in August or going into September. I just personally have some hesitation about that. I would wonder if we may, instead of looking at alternate dates, look at alternate formats. And I don't know how feasible that would be, but that might be something people would be more interested in. Um, but just a comment as far as what that might look like. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was kind of discussing. Like we, we talked about the immersive tents and the one big tent, but we might have to do something differently and spread them out and maybe have more of a, a, a distanced walk or we'll try to tweak it some. I was you know, thinking more like virtually. Oh. I don't know if that would be at all possible, <laughs> but I just like if you're thinking about, you know, pe people gathering in large groups, even in a month or two, I mean, looking at numbers, it might be worth just kind of considering something like that. Right. Well, the other okay. option that I just sent uh, Melinda an email on is uh, we could even think about combining it with a shindig. Right. Yeah. I was thinking if pushing it back and having to have a, a main shindig. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll have to see. Okay. Just a thought as an alternative format, you know, different well, we time can put all these. Location. We can put all these ideas in Dropbox also and put our comments and follow through with that in Dropbox. Yeah, good idea. Okay. Um, back to 5C. Arbor Day was extended to midnight on Sunday. Um, there was a calendar glitch on that. So be sure you keep promoting this. It's supposed to be a beautiful weekend, so let's try to do a lot with that. Um, the Sunflowers of Public Art Projects. The Sunflowers are uh, Claire, Dean, and I met with Target and walked the area that is next to Founders Park. There's a really attractive hill there. Um, a part of the master plan was to move the sunflowers out of kind of the gully as you come into town. So I think that, Dina, do you have any comments on the move of sunflowers and the coal carts? Really, I just wanted to report that Target's very interested in, in this and is willing to help us figure out how to make it work through a, an agreement with the town to place our property on their property. So I've requested that the um, town attorney uh, take a look at um, uh, an easement agreement. And so, Target would have to look at the easement agreement and agree to it. And then we would come back to CAPS and discuss if that's the location where you'd want to move the sunflowers. And, um, and the same as the coal cart. So while the move was approved in the master plan, the locations were not. So that would be the discussion um, up for CAPS once we see if Target would agree to our uh, terms. Okay. So I just wanted to give you a quick update on that because it is exciting news. You would think a, a large company like Target wouldn't be willing to play, but they, they really are. He was actually um, very excited. So more info to come on that. I just wanted to give you a real quick report on that. Um, not all of the projects we're working on have been moving forward as quickly as that one, which is very great news. Um, and then just to answer um was there another question debbie that i missed to answer um no it's just that that we'll get the feedback from target okay. and then we'll have to vote on the locations once we find out um yeah. from target okay, okay. And, 
I just want to say briefly, I know we don't have time for a big um, debate about this, but just to put it out there, I actually do like where the sunflowers are located right now. I like seeing them when I come around the bend. I, I think a lot of people see them. I like that you can see them from the freeway. So I actually like that spot for them. I, I like the idea of adding artwork to the, the location near Target as well. Um, but just to put it out there, I, I think it would be a loss to take the sunflowers away from where they are. So just something to think about. Okay, we'll come back to that in May and keep you updated from the attorney. Um, one of the things that I think is, um, we were going to go to the ProStack and OSAC monthly meetings, just basically to touch base with them. And then of course, all the COVID-19 happened and they were in the same position that we are. Their first meeting was virtual through Zoom. So I didn't want to you know, get in their space for that basically. But I have talked to them and we've been reaching out to them. And one of the things that along with that is so amazing is that um, Dina in all these uh, plans for the bus shelters has coordinated with OSAC, ProStack, and the Historic Commission, which is kind of a really neat way to um, be able to bring all the different committees in together. So we appreciate that. Okay, um, new business. Um, subcommittees, I sent out the email this afternoon. I got an email back. Any, um, <clears throat> and Christina volunteered or said she would be willing to do either the uh, trailhead at the new Ormond Roche or the um, temporary art. So Christina, I was thinking the Ormond Roche because I know that you like to be out and about a lot. And that's probably a sooner one rather than the temporary art exhibits. Anybody, any other thoughts? You saw how I kind of set everything up, but you know, all of us are obviously going to be involved in all the committees but I think it would be a little bit more efficient at the monthly meetings if we do have those subcommittees. And I did talk to everybody. I know that if, you know, like David was, you know, since he's newer and stuff, wasn't quite sure if he wanted to be the chair, for instance, of the temporary art. Any ideas, any opinions, any way you would like um, to be involved or you can, e you know, you can obviously email me, whatever it would be. But that was kind of the thought on the subcommittees. So it looks like in the list that you sent out, we kind of have people who are chairing the different yes. activities. Yes. But Maybe I don't know, should we yeah. have, you know, two or three people listed per subcommittee or? Um, that would be great, actually. Um, we know who you've been, your chair of the bus shelters. We know who you've been working with on the bus shelters. The yeah. Prairie Dogs is basically good to go and Dean is taking it from there. Yeah. Um, Christina, then again, if she wants to do the, the, trailhead at Orma Roche, and she would be the one who would be the contact person for, oh my gosh, the guy at OSAC. Is it Ryan or is it somebody different? Anyway. I think Ryan is OSAC. It was Ryan OSAC. Okay. Cause I've talked to, I talked to both of them on it. Um, so Christina, the whole team and obviously the whole committee votes on everything, but if Christina actually reaches out to them and keeps, you know, um, working with Dean and giving us feedback on that, that would be great. So we're not all doing everything. Um, for every committee. So, and we divided it into the public art side and then the event side. Um, and you see that on the email I sent out today. And um, Terry is still continued to graciously take our notes and be our archivist, which is actually a really big job, as you can imagine. And Claire is uh, working and has reached out already to the Chamber of Commerce to set up a Chamber of Commerce Award for Creative Business. So that's kind of how we have set out the committees. Any thoughts, opinions? So is the idea that we would kind of split in half so that half of us are working on public art and half are working on events? It, whatever anybody wants to do, really. It's just that, that it, like Melinda knows everything that's going on with the main event and she's, mm -hmm. She's the contact person for Castle and for Dina and that type of thing. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm totally flexible what everybody feel, when anybody feels would work best. Can you remind us, Dina, what the, the remaining calendar year looks like for temporary art? How much money do we have budgeted for that? Um, 
Like, did we have anything planned? I think temporary art is budgeted at 5,000. I have the budget right here, if you can believe it. Um, temporary is 5,000. And we were thinking we would start that in the fall. And so it'd probably be a cold weather temporary art project somewhere. Right, like we like the, the example we keep using is the the like the stick hut or something like in Purple Park or something like that. So, I, I so what would be the turnaround time for getting an art, you know, for the RFP and things like that? Just so, you know, some of us can kind of look. Well, ahead. we were going to start um, developing the project strategy uh, July through September. And uh, I think that's still realistic, even though we missed the March meeting. I still think we could we could do that. And if you know if this stay at home thing goes back to being stay at home, um, we could certainly start that project even earlier. So <laughs> that was art selection point. process would be done by the end of September, and then the art installation would be October, November, or December. All right. So then riddle me this: if we don't if we do have to cancel the main event <coughs> excuse me <coughs> not covid spit <laughs> um, <coughs> um does that give us extra money in the budget to put towards additional temporary exhibits because i mean that would be something very uplifting for the community right if we were right if we moved it and we had maybe two temporary exhibits or um you know could could we tweak it to do that sure yeah, I mean, you can definitely tweak this um, as needed, you know, if the main event has to be canceled or plan B turned virtual or what have you. Um, you also have approximately 11,000 in your uh, contingency budget line item. So if you wanted to add another project that would be related to what you're talking about, um, you guys have that. So how, how would you recommend going forward with that? So um, can, do you have examples that maybe Mitchell had of what they would look like? And so we could stop, start a Dropbox for ideas uh, with, yeah. budget, with line item budget um, attached. So, I mean, I'd like, well, to, I'd like to start getting our creative juices going on this so that- For the can, temporary exhibit specifically? Yeah. Especially yeah, I started a Dropbox shared folder and I've started research on possibilities. So you can see in there, I believe I put the links of things that I've found so far in there um, to get started. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I, I'm really interested in that, but I also think everyone is interested in that. This is when it really gets fun. So uh, do you guys think this sure. is something that we can do as a big committee if we are, if we're all- Abs Absolutely. I mean, it can be a committee of seven or it can be yeah. like the bus stops was a committee of what, four? It, it, it's totally flexible. It's just that you have one person so that you might have like kind of a, a quasi chair for temporary art who's actually coordinating with Dina and it, it takes some of that burden off the chair and the co-chair, that type of thing. Or, Dina. We, or Dina, we just do it as a whole team of seven. Yeah. Um, just a couple things. We only have about four minutes left. So I think we will need to kind of recircle around that. Again, if Dina has the Dropbox, we can put tons of ideas in there and discussions in there for the Dropbox. Okay. Um, We'll table the Chamber of Commerce, that's not till December with Claire anyway. And any other super important discussion items that would be like two minutes before we adjourn. Um, you see on the agenda, the look ahead, and Dina's covered everything like incredibly well, so. I could show you very quickly the cultural arts website. <laughs> if you okay. want. Um, just give me one second here, I'll open it. Dina, do we need to adjourn first so it's actually official and then come back to the website or? Um, no, that's okay, because this this will just be really fast. Actually. Oh, okay. I just have to find it. I'm like, where is it? Okay, so it'll be located under um, departments. Let me move my task bar here. Departments, 
and cultural arts right here. So it's under parks, rec, and it has its own page. And it um, looks like this, inspired by nature, um, describes the master plan and these icons will, you'll be able to click on it and it'll tell you about the art path and click on this, tell you about mobility and freedom. So these are the five goals. And they're not quite lined up yet, you'll see, I'm still designing it. On the right side, it'll have our contact info, a what's happening list. And like right here is where you'll be able to click and see what's going on with the Prairie Dog Project, the bus shelters. And I made a five minute video about the Zephyr, wow. um, the making of the Zephyr, that'll be there. You can read the master plan executive summary and the creative placemaking full master plan. And then down here it rotates photos. So it's my draft right now, and I hope to have it um, completed within the next week, and I'll send it to you guys for more comments and, and ideas. Very cool. Amazing That's very job, Gina. cool. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. All right. Um, if there's no other discussion, um, I move to adjourn at 7.58. Is there a second? Before they shut us off. Second. To adjourn. Okay. Meeting adjourned at 758. Great meeting. All right. Take care. Everybody. Bye. Bye. Take care.